the massive mystery of human civilization itself, just in the structures that were yeah. left behind with no explanation. Yeah. That alone makes us go, well, we have this bizarre idea in our head of how things progress based on our current understanding of the world we yeah. live in right now. But that has no bearing right. on Egypt. Yeah. Like, what did they do? How'd they yeah. do that? We don't know. I know. History is a predictive science, which is like a weird thing, but like people don't like think about this, but like, you know, you have to have theories of the past and then test it against the record, right? right. So it's not really any different than any other domain of knowledge where we're trying to make predictions and test them against current data. It's just like history, for some reason, we think it actually happened. Therefore, like there's one narrative, but it's usually constructed based on what we know and we're learning all the time. Well, also the problem in... And we that, forget all the time. <laughs> the collapse of that civilization, yeah. the burning of the Library of Alexandria, yeah, so, so all tragic. the records law so they yeah. probably had written down how they yeah. did everything yeah and some assholes came along and burnt everything yeah. and now we're like what did you do they were definitely assholes that was such an Ass amazing list. i know holes. i like at the I, when i first heard about the library of alexandria and it, i was like that was a heartbroken I was oh like, can you even imagine what was lost if we knew what they knew the amount of advancement just egypt yeah. just that one part of africa where they figured out how to do some things that to this day 4,500 plus years later, we are perplexed. Yeah. Perplexed. Like, there's theories. They all yeah. suck. Every theory sucks. <laughs> yeah. They've just, you know, they've just recently discovered some sort of hydraulic technology that was in one of the pyramids. Oh, really? Yeah, see no, if you can has... find that. Because there's, there's a recent, some recent research that was published where one of, it wasn't the, the Khufu pyramid, it was another pyramid. And in one of these other pyramids, they believe they have evidence of some sort of hydraulic technology that oh, was so used. Cool. A yeah. study published Monday in a journal PLOS. One researcher proposed that ancient people may have relied on water to build the step pyramid. Um, uh, the suspect hydro hydraulic system may have helped lift stones from the center of the pyramid. Wow. So, like, we're still trying to figure out yeah. what they did. So long before I got into science, like one of the first places I actually encountered astronomy was like reading about the Orion mystery when I was like in fifth grade. And I like I was like got obsessed with it for a little while about like whether the chambers and the pyramids were actually aligned with the stars and stuff. And like, like, how did they possibly do that? It was it was kind of crazy. There's a guy but, named Christopher Dunn who's yeah. an engineer and he has the wildest theory. He thinks that the construction of the pyramid and this is, by the way, both uh maligned by some archaeologists, completely dismissed, but also embraced by younger archaeologists who oh, aren't, aren't as... So this theory is that the way the Great Pyramid was set up was not set up as a tomb, but was set up as some sort of a, a way to generate electricity. And, oh, and that there was, there was a, an, a chamber, a subterranean chamber, and that this chamber had something in it that was like pounding on the stone and creating a certain vibration. And then they had this, these shafts that they had access to that had, they, they know these shafts existed and they know the structure of these shafts and these shafts that existed in the marble or whatever the stone, granite rather, and they would fill these shafts up with some sort of chemicals and then at the end of the shaft was limestone and so the limestone is porous and the limestone allows the gases to escape from all these chemicals and contain itself inside this chamber this chamber is constantly being vibrated and then there are yeah. these pathways that lead up to what they're calling the king's chamber which is this insane structure it's one of the most perplexing things about the pyramid because yeah. these are immense stones that are I mean, positioned a phenomenal piece of architecture and then in the those, they have shafts that go straight out into space yeah. that he thinks is gathering gamma rays. And so the gamma rays are interacting with this hydrogen that's being created by these yeah. chemicals and the vibrations and that all these things are used to generate electricity. And this is why there's a gold capstone on the top of the period and smooth yeah. limestone on the outside. It's a nutty theory. But yeah, this guy's very. a, he's <laughs> a brilliant man. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's incredibly creative. And if yes. it's testable and like there's m ways to validate that that could work that that would be well the problem is you'd have yeah. to do it at scale and like what are you gonna well you could look pyramid? for traces of like whatever chem chemistry is talking about on the pyramid walls and like it would be possible to experimentally verify whether gamma rays could do that i don't suspect that they could but but you, like there's pieces of it like this is how science works you have like a story of a set of hypotheses and you can test individual parts of it and then try to validate it so it'd be kind of cool if you know like he wanted to try to do that or could, right and so then the question is 
How'd they figure that out? I don't know. Imagine yeah. if there. Imagine if it turns out to be correct, and this was some sort of a way of generating power yeah. from from the Earth and space itself. How how you how'd you? But also, that out? why? Because where would they put the power? They didn't have any electric grids or anywhere to like. Put Not it. that we know of, right? The problem yeah. is, it, it all gets to this weirdness of like how how much evidence would be left from ten thousand years ago? How much evidence would be left from twenty thousand years ago? Yeah. How long did it take? people to figure that out was it two or three thousand years like what how much tinkering 